Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Aviation Avi, go where you feel the most alive. You and I are aware that aeroplane make no money when it is on ground. Thus, airlines strive hard to reduce the time for which the aircraft is on ground to minimum and thus reduce their turnaround time. To know what turnaround time is, please be along with us and let's get started. What is turnaround time? It is the time that an aeroplane spends from the time of its landing to its next takeoff for the next flight. During this time, the aeroplane is making no money. Rather, it is incurring some costs like the airport fees, the leasing costs and other costs related to aircraft operations. Thus, airline and airport resources are collaborated and made to work in such a way so that the turnaround time of an aircraft is reduced to minimum. What is the aim of turnaround time? It is a process that involves planning and handling of all the tasks to have a clean, efficient and safe journey for the next flight. Thus, it is a very important factor of airport operations and directly determines whether the passengers for the next flight will enjoy an optimal journey and experience. What does turnaround time involve? It involves the efficient coordination of all the tasks to maintain punctuality of aircraft operations so that passengers like us are left with minimum wait times and it also involves impeccable maintenance so that the aircraft lands at its destination free from any accidents and incidents. The efficiency of ground handling and expeditious aircraft flow depends on many factors like the right number of staff to be positioned per aircraft, the right resources to be positioned for the aircraft to turn around in minimum time and also the compatibility of the workforce and the resources, the proper delegation and planning for work division, not to forget the capability and performance of humans and the various meteorological conditions. There are a number of tasks to be performed during the turnaround time simultaneously and effectively. These tasks are Firstly, after the aircraft lands, it comes into the parking bay after which it is chalked and safety cones are placed around it. Next, the passengers are deboarded with the help of an aerobridge or the airport coaches. During this, it must be taken care that the passenger do not face any discomfort, but the time taken to deboard passengers is kept to the minimum. Next is the cleaning of the cabin, that is removal of all the wastes and cleaning of the washrooms to make the aircraft ready for the next flight. The standard operating procedures manual of the aircraft manufacturers and the airline itself lay down a number of safety checks that are to be performed by the airline before the aircraft is declared fit to fly for the next flight. The aircraft must also be filled with the requisite amount of fuel so that it lands at its destination safely. And how can we forget the loading of food and beverage that we enjoy on every flight? The hold of the aircraft that was emptied is now loaded with our baggage and cargo. If it is a passenger aircraft, the loading of passengers onto the aircraft while keeping in mind the utmost comfort of the passengers. While all these tasks are being performed by the handling agencies, the pilot and the crew must assure and revise the routing information, the number of passengers boarding the aircraft and also perform the security checks of the aircraft. Next, after all these operations have been completed, depending on the type of parking bay the aircraft is parked on, it is towed for taking off for the next flight. If the aircraft was parked on a remote bay, the aircraft can set out for its next takeoff 
with the help of its own engines but if it was parked in a power n push back bay then it has to take the help of the tow truck to set out for its next takeoff the duration of turn around time varies from airlines to airlines and that for low cost carriers are generally 30 minutes or half an hour and that for larger aircrafts of a premium airline is generally an hour and a half and traditionally it is generally an hour the effective turn around management helps in coordinating the response of all the ground handling agencies and effectively reducing the turn around time or the ground time of an aircraft. There are very interesting ways in which airlines have reduced their turn around time. You must be aware of Ryanair which is European ultra low cost carrier and one of the world's largest ultra low cost carrier which have a turn around time of 25 minutes only and this airline do not have any backseat pockets. Wondering why? In the year 2004, when the airline removed backseat pockets from its aircrafts, it saw a tremendous and significant reduction in its turn around time because it takes a lot of time to clear and clean the aircraft with so many seats and each seat having large backseat pockets. Technology has proven to be very useful in reducing turn around times. Well integrated and technology driven ground handling processes help to create an overview of all the actions that are taking place around the aerodrome This help to minimize turn around related delays. A well scheduled and well planned course of action for the crew help them to perform all of their tasks in an orderly fashion so as to reduce the turn around time and help in gaining valuable seconds. Technology has helped significantly to reduce turn around time but not always. Passenger boarding bridge, the retraction and extension of which takes a lot of time as compared to that of the passenger buses. We as the passengers take the maximum part of the turn around time because we need to embark and disembark the aircraft in which the airlines guide us to maintain balance of the aircraft. Using both the doors of an aircraft helps to reduce the turn around time of an aircraft significantly. This concept of two-door efficiency is also a reason why many low-cost carriers go for passenger buses rather than passenger boarding bridges or the sky bridges. Boarding segmentation is also an important strategy applied by airlines to reduce their turn around time. In this, the airline split the passengers based on zones and then allowed them to board. This strategy is generally used by airlines with wide-body aircrafts like the Boeing 747 and the Airbus 380. However, such techniques may not be much useful for airlines having aircrafts that of Airbus A320. According to Boeing, ever since 1970s, the time that passengers take to board an aircraft has slowed down to over 50% to as low as 9 passengers per minute and this is mainly because of the increasing amount of carry-on luggage brought in by the passengers. A solution may be to segment the passengers not only by zones but also by rows, thus allowing the passengers seated closer to the window to board first, followed by the ones in the middle seats and then the ones present near the aisle. Various agencies work together to complete all the tasks related to aircraft turnaround. These tasks generally are dependent on one another and are sequence. For example, boarding of the aircraft cannot start before cleaning is over. 
boarding cannot start before the crew arrives. The loading of duty free onto an aircraft cannot start before the crew arrives onto the aircraft and the fueling operations cannot start before the disembarkation of all the passengers of an aircraft. Now if the crew arrives late, the loading of duty free will be late. If the loading of duty free is late, boarding will be late, thus seating will be late. And thus, the aircraft will leave its gate late. Thus, the turnaround time will be increased. Thus, this chain of reaction leads to the increase in turnaround time. Well, aviation is full of surprises and everything does not go as planned. Suppose there is a late arrival of aircraft, it will lead to reactionary delays and Efficient ground handling is one way to deal with it. Airlines have a defined ground time at each airport. Thus, if they exceed this time, it is called a delay. But airlines keep a buffer time, approximately 15 minutes, to cater to all the delays and maintain punctuality of aircraft operations. In order to increase the efficiency of turnaround operations, a turnaround coordinator may be appointed whose roles and responsibilities will depend on the airline and the airport. Thus, an effective turnaround operation is the capability of an airline to perform its turnaround activities and deliver the punctual departure of flight. Hey viewers, if you have any new ideas that the airlines can adopt to reduce their turnaround time, please comment down below and if you like our work, please do like, share and subscribe because your support is that drives us and is our motivation.